everyone, I'm Sarah from Everyday Starlet. Welcome to my channel. Today I actually want to do a review on liquid lipsticks. I actually did a video a while back, I think it was around Valentine's Day, of Kiss Proof lipsticks. That video has actually become actually my highest viewed beauty video. So thank you guys so much for watching that. I totally appreciate that. If you haven't seen it yet, I will link that below. So I wanted to do something that was similar, but I obviously didn't want to do the same thing over again, so I decided to review liquid lipsticks. Now I feel like all of the Kiss Proof lipsticks that I reviewed are, they kind of fall under the same category of liquid lipsticks, but they were all two steps. They were all basically a liquid lipstick that you apply, let it dry, and then put a gloss over it. So I decided for this video to just review straight up liquid lipsticks, like not two step, these are all one step lipsticks. I tried 12. I tried to keep them all in the same color category. They're actually all in an orangey type color, which if you've watched my like orange lipstick video, you'll know orange lips have not always been my favorite. So the fact that I now have all these orange lipsticks is a little crazy for me. But I want to kind of keep them all in the same category. I couldn't find like an orange corally type shade in all of them, but I wanted to kind of keep them in a similar color family. I tried literally all ranges of prices. There are some that are as cheap as like three bucks all the way up to, I think the most expensive one is about $28. I will give you a little hint. The most expensive one and the least expensive one are not in the categories you'd think they'd be in for best and worst. So if you want to see my liquid lipstick review, then just keep watching. <laughs> So let me just tell you first of all how I actually did my sort of scientific review. It's very similar to how I did my Kiss Proof one. I basically put all the lipsticks on my arm and I judge their pigment, then I let them dry, I judge sort of their texture, whether they were matte or glossy. I actually blotted them with a dry paper towel. I smudge them with a dry paper towel, I smudge them with a damp paper towel, and then I hit them with some makeup remover for the ones that were still there to basically see how they would be, you know, smudging, kissing, waterproof, and how well they remove at the end of the day. And then with the ones that I ranked as the best, I kind of wore each of them for a little while on my lips to kind of see how they felt on the lips. So that's kind of scientifically how I did it. It was very scientific, let me tell you. I felt very smart, I should have worn glasses. So I'm gonna start out with the worst. These were just the ones that I didn't find held up to the test. But you know what, some of these you might really enjoy and really love. So I'm just gonna kind of tell you the pros and cons of some of these so you can kind of make a judgment for yourself. In the worst category, I'm I'm going to start with the Revlon Colorstay Moisture Stain. Here's the thing, this is actually in the shade Miami Fever. Here's the thing about this one though, it's actually not bad if you just want a gloss. <laughs> but it was considered a liquid lipstick. I don't know, for me it was, it was a lip gloss. Like it's a decent lip gloss, but it didn't have much color pigment, it had no, no stayability. I'm making up words now. Stayability? Yeah. Stay, I don't know. It didn't last very long. As a gloss, not bad. But as a liquid lipstick, not great. I feel like the same goes for the Maybelline Color Elixir. Color Sensational Color Elixir. This is in Mandarin Rapture. Again, there was hardly any pigment. And it even looks like a gloss. Like, there was hardly any pigment. It didn't last at all. Like, again, as a gloss, a good product. Like, the color is really nice. I actually really like the packaging because, like, it kind of looks like a lipstick this way. Like, but then you flip it over and it's just a gloss. I don't know. I mean, I like it, but again, it's a gloss. It's not really a liquid lipstick. The next product I put in the worst category because this was the most expensive product of all the ones I tried. So I think I kind of feel like if you're going to spend that kind of money on a liquid lipstick, it should be phenomenal, and this kind of wasn't. So again, this wasn't terrible, but it was not as good as what it should have been for the price. This is this one actually wasn't that expensive because I actually could find this in a small bottle, and I figured I'm going to save money because I'm just testing it out. This was the Hourglass... It doesn't actually have the full name on it, but it's the Hourglass Liquid Lipstick. And I love Hourglass. Let me tell you, their ambient light powders are my life. I've gotten more compliments on my skin since using their ambient light powders than any other time in my life. I love Hourglass, but this, the pigment was decent, but I felt like I had to put on like two coats of it, and then it got kind of clumpy, and then I have to admit when I was actually doing like the wipe test, it kind of pilled, you know what I mean? So for me, I feel like the full size bottle of this is, I believe $28, so it's like, you know, the most expensive out of all of them. Like, if you're gonna spend that kind of money, 
you don't want a liquid lipstick that's going to be pilling and get clumpy and so for me this was just like a fail and not worth the money the next product actually pains me again to put in this category because i love too faced but this is their too faced melted liquefied longwear lipstick this is not long wear. Here's the thing, amazing pigment. If you're looking for something that is like, say, a cross between a lipstick and a gloss, like you want something that's gonna have the pigment of a lipstick but stay glossy and shiny like a gloss and you don't wanna do two steps of putting on lipstick and then putting on a gloss, this is an amazing product. The reason why it's in the worst category is because it really didn't last at all. It didn't even pass like the dry smear test. That's why this is in the worst category. I wouldn't go kissing anybody with this because you're gonna get it all over them. This next product isn't technically a liquid lipstick, so I really shouldn't put it in its worst category because it's not really a liquid lipstick. This is the NYX Intense Butter Gloss. This actually might be kind of a dupe for, I don't know about color wise, but the melted, the Too Faced, because this is super pigmented. So it's almost like a liquid lipstick, but it doesn't have the staying power. I think it might have even had a little bit more staying power than the Too Faced one, but not much staying power, but it doesn't claim to. So, I mean, again, if you want a really pigmented gloss, this is the way to go. But, you know, so I'm kind of cheating putting it in a liquid lipstick category, but because it's so intense and pigmented, I kind of put it into this category because I wanted an even 12. These all smell amazing, like for lip glosses. I'm not sure even what that smell is, but they really, they just smell so good. So again, I'm not putting this in the worst category as if like, don't buy it. The same with the Too Faced, like I'm not saying don't buy this, but I'm saying as like a long wearing liquid lipstick, these are not gonna be long wearing, but they do look beautiful on the lips. Another product that is a liquid lipstick, or they're calling, I guess, themselves a liquid lipstick, is the Rimmel London Show Off Lip Velvet in matte. This is almost like a matte gloss. This is really difficult actually to get out of the container. I feel like you have to pull it and I always feel like I'm going to spill it everywhere. I feel like it's it was trying with the matte. It didn't have a lot of pigment, a little bit. I mean it was pigmented but not majorly pigmented. The color range wasn't that expansive and it really didn't last long at all. I feel like they were going for kind of like a dupe of the long wearing liquid lipsticks, but they kind of missed the mark because it's really not that long wearing. And I feel like if you're gonna wear something matte, it better be long wearing. Wasn't all that impressed with this one. Now on to the best liquid lipsticks. I got so excited there, I feel like I'm yelling. The best ones, actually, this is the top six. This is actually from a brand I had never tried before. This is the MUA Makeup Academy. I saw this in the drugstore and it was just like, it's a liquid lipstick, I'll give it a try. I'm not in love with the packaging because it's kind of big and bulky. When I opened it up, because in the drugstore you have to be really careful that you don't find one that's been tampered with. And I thought this one had been sealed up, but the brush is like all clumpy and stuff as if it had been used, but I don't think it had been because it was pretty sealed up, so I don't know. The product, it has a funny smell. When I put this on, the pigment is okay, but it dries matte, but doesn't feel drying on the lips. So many of these feel so drying on the lips, and this one actually feels light and nice on the lips. I was so prepared to hate this, because I don't like the packaging, I don't like the brush, I don't really love the smell. It didn't have a phenomenal color range, but when I actually put it on and then it dried, I was so surprised that it felt nice. It just felt like I had a very light matte lip on. It didn't feel cakey or drying like some other liquid lipsticks can feel. So again, the ultimate result of this was actually pretty good, but everything leading up to it was kind of like, eh. So that's kind of why it's my worst of the best. It has some redeeming qualities, but I don't really like it kind of thing. I don't know if that makes any sense. The next one I'm going to mention is actually the cheapest. This is the least expensive of all of these. I believe this is like three bucks. It is the Wet n Wild Mega Last Rouge Liquid, ah, Liquid Lip Color. <laughs> Wet n Wild Mega Last Liquid Lip Color. This is a very limited range of colors. I actually had to get it in a red because they didn't have like any kind of a corally color. This is extremely pigmented but it does feel drying on the lips, which a lot of them do. So if you have drier lips, this is probably not going to work for you. But I have to say, for only being $3, if you want to try a liquid lip color, like a matte liquid long lasting lip color, if you want to give it a try to see if it's for you, spend the three bucks and get this because to be honest with you, I felt like color range, no, but like pigment wise 
and wearability like being long lasting this was probably the longest lasting of all this was actually hard to get off with makeup remover like this is long lasting so if you want to give out a try and you don't want to shell out the money for some of the ones that I'm about to mention now give this a try for three dollars you kind of can't go wrong and it's going to be just as good probably as some of the others you just won't get the color range that some of the others have so but for the price, you really can't beat this. The next one I'm going to talk about is probably the one that I feel like most people on YouTube are familiar with. It's the Anastasia Beverly Hills Liquid Lipstick. This one I got in Spicy because I actually have seen people wearing this and I love this color. And I put it on and I was like, oh my god, it's an orange, but yet it looks good on me and my pale skin. It's so perfect. I absolutely fell in love with it because the color range is amazing. And I was just like in love with it until I had it on for maybe about like a half hour and then my lips felt so dry. And I was like, I can't stand this. I didn't actually try putting a gloss over it. I might give that a try, but I think that would really hurt the long wearing ability of it. This has an amazing color range. Again, really pigmented. It is really long lasting. It's just, it, for me personally, it's so drying on the lips. That's why it, kind of falls in rank but again I I really wish that I liked this more because I just I love the colors honestly this if you want to get if you're not sure if something is going to be too drying on the lips and you want to try something try the wet and wild first if you decide that you really like the matte long wearing liquid lipstick then you can give the Anastasia Beverly Hills one a try whereas if you decide that you like really don't like the dryness then you've only spent the money on this one and you can save your money on this just a little tip. The next one I'm going to mention is the Stila All Day Liquid Lipstick. This is actually very similar to the Anastasia Beverly Hills one. I actually think this is a wider color range. This one I think was a little bit less drying than the Anastasia Beverly Hills one, but it was still pretty drying on the lips, I have to admit. So again, pigment, amazing. It's a matte color. It is extremely long wearing, great color range. It's just for me personally, it was just too drying on the lips. Next is actually the one that I have on right now. We're coming down to the wire, only two more. This is actually the Kat Von D, Kat Von D Everlasting Liquid Lipstick. This is in the color Agogo. This is a bright, bright orange. I'm not really even sure if I can pull off this orange, but I'm doing it anyway. This actually surprised me. It is drying on the lips, but it doesn't have, my lips don't feel like as dry like they feel a little bit smoother they feel more matte than the other two which I was amazed because I really thought they were all gonna be about the same but I have to say if you're looking at the difference between the Kat Von D the Stila or the Anastasia Beverly Hills I would definitely go with the Kat Von D because it is the least drying of all of those not quite as big a color range I don't think as the Stila Price wise, it's kind of in that same category as the Stila and the Anastasia, but I definitely think that formula wise, for me at least, because I don't really like that really dry feeling on your lips, I would say this one would be the way to go if that's the direction you want to go in. Now for my number one, this is kind of cheating, I have to admit, because this isn't technically a liquid lip color, but this gives me everything I want and I would pick this over any of these any day. This is the Sephora Cream Lip Stain. I've mentioned this in so many of my videos. It goes on like a liquid lip color, but again, it's kind of a cream. So it's not technically, it's not quite as runny as a liquid lip color, but it goes on like a liquid lip color. So I'm counting it as that. This is a matte lip color, but it is not drying on the lips. And you know what? Mathematically, like price-wise, this is right smack in the middle range. It's not the highest range, it's not the lowest range. You obviously have to get it at Sephora because it's a Sephora brand. So it's literally just a few dollars more than your drugstore ones, and it's a few dollars less than any of the other more expensive high-end brands. So it's like right smack in the middle. If you want a matte lip, you want it to be long-lasting, it may not be quite as long-lasting as, say, you know, the Kat Von D, the Stila, or the Anastasia because it is not quite as matte, but it will last a long time. Maybe not through a whole makeout session. You won't be reapplying this all the time. And it doesn't feel drying on the lips. 
It is a perfect matte. It ha they have beautiful color ranges. This is just a holy grail for me. This made me fall in love with matte lips because I always used to be a glossier kind of girl. That's how much I love this, people. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you have a favorite liquid lip color or have any questions about any of these or any other liquid lip colors, if you have any questions, comments, anything, any video suggestions, anything you'd like me to review, please leave them in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. And be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my videos. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you join me next time.